our beautiful sanctuary for worship, as well as uh, welcome to those who may be joining us uh, virtually on our Facebook live stream. A couple of announcements for us. First of all, this afternoon in this sacred space, we will be worshiping our God again as we celebrate our, our completion of 155 years of ministry and mission. And as we indeed uh, anticipate uh, our closing of our sacred and beloved church at the end of this year. Uh, that service begins at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, of course, I'm hoping that we will set aside the, the Trinitarian rule of, of one God, one church, one hour. Uh, please come back to church. We need you here. Uh, the next announcement is that the, our executive council will be meeting next Sunday after, uh, after our worship service. Next Sunday, executive council. And then I need to be uh, thanking some folks. We've had uh, another group of cleaners, sorters, and pitchers. Uh, Denny and Sue, Tom and Kitty, uh, Nancy Lukotic, and Cindy Ripley joined in the fun this past Thursday uh, as they continued uh, the, the hard work of cleaning and sorting our church's treasures. Yes? And Laura brought us cookies in the late afternoon, which really helped. Wow, okay. Uh, and Secretary Laura brought cookies to, uh, to give a, a little bit of a sugar jump start to the cleaners. So thank you all for your continuing efforts. Finally, uh, the beautiful flowers that are uh, here and on our altar, this fall uh, flower collection uh, comes to us as a gift uh, for our service this morning as well as this afternoon from our brothers and sisters at the Heart United Methodist Church. Uh, this beautiful bouquet of white uh, comes to us from our brothers and sisters at uh, the, the Mears United Methodist Church. And so we're thankful to our siblings in Christ this morning. Do you have other announcements to share today? Then let's get started. Welcome, Judy.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Loving God, be with us in our times of worship. Bless us that we may be a blessing to others. Shower us with grace and mercy that we might bring grace and mercy to a world in pain. Give us pure hearts and humble spirits that we might do Christ's example in all we say and do. Grant us hope and perseverance that we might live as the saints who have come before us. In faithful reverence we pray. Amen. Great is our faithfulness. Let's stand and sing together. Don't 
go and glean in another field, and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this, Ruth bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have you found such favor in your eyes that you, you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then moving forward to the fourth chapter. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, who was the father of David. Words from our still speaking God. Thanks be to God. away, but have 
not been made. Let's remember these saints. David William McGuire, March 30, 1939 to November 25, 2022. Dr. Richard Deal, June 2nd, 1935 through January 13th, 2023. Catherine W. Ripley, October 24th, 1931 through March 28th. 2023. Jean Ann Ripley, August 4th, 1935 through August 15th, 2023. Joseph Edward Ripley, September 12, 1934 through September 22nd, 2023. And for those unnamed, but yet loved and adored, It is this upcoming Saturday, uh, November 11th, at 11 o'clock in the morning at the Plymouth United Church of Christ in Grand Rapids, that we will celebrate the life of our dear sister in Christ, Jean Ann Ripley. And now, let us sing just the first stanza of the familiar and wonderful hymn for all the saints. It's number 546 in your hymnal. Let's sing.
had confirmed what I already knew. I'm half Scottish. That's my mom's Davidson side. And I'm half Dutch. That's the Stegerda from my dad's side. The, the membership also offered me the opportunity to explore my ancestral heritage. I, I created a, a family tree of sorts. A uh, family tree. I think I, I told you this, and it's a dream of mine, a fantasy probably really, because what church would ever do this? But don't you think it'd be a great idea, great use of these expansive ceilings that are in churches to have family trees depicted that would show not only individual genealogies, but how those genealogies might be connected together. I know it's just a pipe dream of mine, but I gotta tell you, I think it would be beneficial to members and friends currently as well as visitors who come by uh, and, and <laughs> Pastor, that information would be essential to know. Information like that I'm still learning about. Anyway, this morning we're going to do some historical family tree building with the help of our friend Ruth, a Moabite woman and her Hebrew husband, Boaz, and Ruth's Hebrew mother-in-law, Naomi. Wonderful characters that are a part of our biblical story, as well as our genealogical heritage. First, though, let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight and hearing, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I know, I know this, I know that I am in the minority with this assertion that I'm going to share. I really love and appreciate those biblical genealogies that show up in Scripture every now and then. I, I'm in the minority, right? And, and you know what I'm talking about. And all of those begats that relate the chronology of the biblical narrative through individual persons and their families. They, they get us from one key person in Scripture to another key person in Scripture, key person of the faith. Now this morning's selections from the story of Ruth are important on many levels, not the least of which is, is making the connection with Ruth, a foreigner. Always remember Ruth is a foreigner in a foreign land. Making the connection with Ruth with none other than King David. Now, this is vital information because it connects a foreigner, can't emphasize that enough, a foreigner to King David, who is ge genealogically connected to Joseph. You know Joseph, you know the one the Joseph I'm 
I'm talking about. Joseph, Jesus' daddy. Ruth, a Moabite and a widow herself, follows her widowed mother-in-law, Naomi, who is herself Israelite, Hebrew, back to Israel. And Ruth claims they were our uh, scriptural thought for reflection this morning. Ruth tells Naomi, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. After a series of deaths in the family, Ruth goes with Naomi back to Israel and finds protection and love in a man named Boaz. Together they have a son named Obed, who is by birth now a part of the lineage of the Hebrew people of Israel. Obed, in due time, does his own beginning and has a son who is named Jesse. Now remember, these people that come after Ruth, Ruth, who is a foreigner, now have kind of a mixed blood thing going on here. And so Jesse does his own beginning. And Jesse, in due time, has a son who will do some beginning of none other than King David. King David. You know, a little guy with a slingshot grows up to be a great king of Israel. So why is all of this important? But beyond the notion of Ruth being a part of Jesus' lineage. Well, part of the importance lies in the fact that Ruth, remember, is not a part of Israel. Ruth is not a Hebrew. And speaking genetically now, all the begats that take us from Ruth to Joseph of Nazareth, all the folks are now of mixed sink in. Mixed race. We're all mixed race, aren't we? Can any of us say that we are 100% of Scottish and Dutch, and of course there are a few other backgrounds mixed in with those two primaries because of my ancestors' beginning. I guess it's past tense, so begatting? When we 
think of ourselves, when we think of our families, when we think of our church family, we are a mishmash genetically. Genetically. Through all of the beginnings that get us to us, our DNA is quite different, perhaps, than, than even the DNA of the person sitting next to us. The person to whom we might be married. The person with whom, perhaps, we did. Genetically, we are different and unique, and different and unique to a person. And am I right about it? But let's think genealogically. It's here that we discover and can celebrate our sameness within our uniqueness. We trace our family trees back and back a little further and back a little further, farther back still, back to the biblical days where somehow, some way, we are named and we get baptized and we are dumped or sprinkled with water. The water, the water of fire in the Holy Spirit. We are Christians. We are Christians, either through a genetic beginning history from Israel, not the country that you know, but the people, the descendants of Jacob, who is also known as Israel. And most of the time, his sons and his wives just call him dad. Now, Joseph would be a technicolor dream coach. Christians who trace our genetic heritage back to Israel and the Hebrew people or back to the Gentiles. You remember the Gentiles and who they are. The Gentiles were merely the people who weren't Hebrew. The Gentiles those folks who found spiritual grounding in Jesus that was shared by the disciples and the apostles like Peter and Paul, the Gentiles, genetically, yes, we are still a mishmash. But genealogically, 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 we are siblings in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, this becomes really important, vital, in fact, to understand and to know, and yes, dare I say, it's imperative that we that we believe that we are genetic geologi ge mm -hmm. genealogically connected. connected. And it's important 
important that we believe this as we prepare. sitting next to you or behind you or in front of you Doris I'm sorry but you get to look at me ever wonder in this upheaval in our journeys as individual Christians, as Christian families, if you've ever wondered who's going to take care of you in the future? Let's sing about the answer. Let's stand. God will take care of us.
We are a tired people. We seek rest from the labors of our ministry. We seek nourishment for our souls. We seek a holy presence to lead us into yet unknown futures. And so today, we come to this table for refreshment, for spiritual sustenance, for guidance. We come to this table to receive the compassion of our Lord. We come to this table as, as siblings in Christ to be strengthened, to be nourished, faith and service for ministry and mission yet unknown. Come, my beloved siblings in Christ, for all is ready. We remember the story well. Jesus was gathered with his uh, disciples on that last evening of his earthly life and desiring to help the disciples remember him and his lessons for life and love. He took bread and he broke it and he told them that this
far we partake, let us speak the ancient words of faith together. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. stanzas two and three. speak the ancient words of faith. The cup which we bless is the communion of the body of Christ. Take and drink. Let us pray. Holy and loving God,
our country and all of the countries around our world. We pray that peace will be
May God's very presence embrace you and give you peace. Not just today, but tomorrow and for all.